Hey YouTube, how's it going? It's Mark again, and welcome back to the Swamp and Stomp YouTube channel. Today, I've got my buddy Richard here from Backcountry Hunters and Anglers, and he's had a fantastic season, turkey season so far. Uh, he's managed to tag out in just two days here in Florida. So today, we're gonna talk a little bit about some of the tactics that he's been using uh, to be successful turkey hunting here in Florida. So, first of all, how long have you been turkey hunting? Been turkey hunting, I think this is my eighth season, so eight years now. Eight years. You started here in Florida? Oh yeah. Yep. So, and and you would say that turkey hunting is like by far your favorite way to hunt. Oh right? yeah. Yeah, I could. I mean, you know, if, if it came down to it, I could give it all up except for turkey hunting. I'm a die-hard turkey hunter. So, you guys may notice from all of our videos, me and Danny, we're pretty hardcore deer hunters. And I think the reason that I'm not as hardcore about turkey hunting is because I just haven't really figured it out. I, I really don't know what I'm doing. I think there's probably a lot of people out there that watch our channel that feel the same way. And so I just really wanted to talk to you because I feel like there's a lot of information that you have that can help me. But I figure, you know, whatever information is going to help me might help some of our viewers. So uh, we're just going to talk turkeys. Yep. You know, I just want to say, you know, I'm not a Jedi Master, I am not a black belt, like, I've, you know, I've just been really persistent, and, you know, I've scouted my butt off, and, um, and that's really what's worked for me, and, uh, as far as calling, you know, you could talk to another guy, and he could probably tell you, you know, a whole different philosophy on calling, but, right. you know, at the end of the day, it all comes down to what works, and... Okay, so... You have two turkeys. So, I mean, obviously, I mean, you, you obviously don't want to tell where it was, but it was obviously South Florida because this was early season and the rest of Florida opens up this weekend. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, so these are true Osceola's. Oh yeah, like, South of Lake O, you know, deep swamp Osceola. So tell me a little bit about when you go out and scout for turkeys, like what exactly are you looking for? Yeah, well, the first thing I'm looking for uh, when I'm getting into a new area is tracks. I'm just trying to cover as much ground as I can and, and you know, just look at the ground, look for muddy spots, look for, for areas where uh, the ground's exposed, you know, you, where you don't have grass or leaves or whatnot. And, so and you, can you can actually, actually see, the see tracks. Yeah, and I'm just, you know, a lot of the times I'm walking buggy trails, you know, I'm walking uh, existing roads and just try and find an area where, where I can really find a, find a good concentrate, a good mix of hen and, and gobbler tracks. And the gobbler tracks, uh, definitely bigger, uh, but the, the main distinction that you you can see just by looking at it is that the gobbler's, his middle fingers is longer than the other two. Generally, oh, uh, I like even a, know that. a hen's track is, is when you when you look at it, it's kind of like equal distant. Yeah. Uh, but the gobbler, that front finger will stick out uh, way past the other two. If I find a lot of them in an area, I'm gonna want to get in there before the sun comes up. You know, the next time I'm out there, and try and figure out where he's roosted. Just listen. Yeah, yeah. Just get in there on a calm morning with you know that without any, a lot of wind, and just listen. So do you usually go in and, and try and like use a locator call or do you just sit there quietly and listen and see what happens? No, I'll usually, you know, get in there and just, you know, let the woods wake up. And, and when I'm scouting, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out what's naturally going on. Yeah. Just trying to figure out where the birds are, where they want to naturally be, where, you know, when they come off the roost, which way they're going to head. I'm, I'm not trying to affect them at all, pretty much. Mm -hmm. It's good to have in your tool belt, you know, those locator calls. You yeah, don't, you don't need case. them, you know, yeah. because there's going to be, you know, on a quiet morning, you're going to hear crows, you're going to hear owls, you're going to hear hawks. I mean, you're going to, you know, gobble to hawk, you know, uh, a hawk coyote ball. or anything, really. Yeah, I mean, anything natural that's in the woods that, you know, makes a, a sharp sound, they're going to respond to. So, and, and sometimes they're going to, you know, gobble every time you hit that owl call, and sometimes they're not going to make a peep you're gonna think there's no birds there and then you know an hour after the sun comes down all of a sudden one just starts hammering 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 out of nowhere so i mean the only thing you can do is scout as you know as much as you can get out there be as prepared as you could possibly be because you're gonna know even when the woods are dead quiet you're gonna know if there's birds there or not you know i've had guys 
yeah walk through an area and they're like oh man i didn't hear nothing there's no birds in here and like you know i've been scouting the last two weekends and heard three four gobblers in the area and i'm like nope no birds here yeah, you know keep on then, walking. yeah <laughs> the second bird i shot this year he didn't even gobble at all on the tree i mean not a peep out of him but we, you knew he was there yeah we we knew he was there we, you know we, we thought he was in this one head and you know so we set up just outside of it and uh you know sun came up not a peep hit the owl call not a peep maybe about 150 yards in front of me just hear a big old bird fly down you know at this point i don't know if it's a hen or i don't know if it's a gobbler but we know he's in this head we know he's roosting in that head before so you know just have to kind of you know uh, assume that it, you know it's, it's a good chance that that's that gobbler so creeped in towards the direction he flew sat down listened to the woods a little bit nothing it was him i mean he was you know he must have gone an, another 150 yards he was far but he answered me right away so as soon as we made that connection put the call down just chilled waited maybe 10 minutes go by nothing all right he's in the same spot so he's not coming towards me so i'm gonna hustle my butt towards him so get up you know get all my stuff sneak maybe cut the distance in half between me and him sit back down called again he's close to me all right it's on so you know then the gun's like this waiting like that and uh just listening 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 nothing 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 waiting 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 so i'm like all right hit it again nothing why so now he's either doing one or two things he's either coming towards me or you know he's out and, and he's, he figured it out yeah. he, he's on he's on his way out of here don't have a clue but all i can do is sit there and wait you know the big the ultimate question of turkey hunting to stay or to go <laughs> yeah that's you know when you're I, I was about to say like in that situation it's like he just shut up it's like you're thinking should i try and figure out where he went and follow him or cut him off or this is the great dilemma of turkey hunting how long do you sit and wait you know to stay or to go so you know i knew he responded to me so you know we had he the knew you were there he knew i was there we yeah. had the conversation you know as soon as that bird uh you know recognize you or responds to you you get a response to that bird he knows you're there just you know just decided all right i'm gonna be patient on this one put the call down not gonna call again sitting there listening to into the woods it's a real quiet morning i start here to drumming when i hear that it's on so you know if i start here drumming you know probably 50 50 chance that bird's gonna die so as soon as I heard that, just wait, chill, you know, five minutes later, I see that head coming through the woods looking for me, just chill, just chill. As soon as he got within range, boom, that was it. So, you know, people put a lot of emphasis on calling, but man, that's only half of it. You know, I think for me, for the success I've had on public land, it's that scouting, man. I mean, you just yeah. really got to put in that time. I make the mistake of seeing them during deer season and you know well there's turkeys here for sure mm -hmm. and then uh you know but what i saw uh this weekend i went to an area where we saw a whole bunch of turkeys uh during deer season and i didn't see any sign of there being turkeys yeah. but there was another spot that i'd gone to uh where i saw a whole bunch of turkeys mm -hmm. and it was it was like a creek bottom uh and i knew that even now that it's quite a bit drier there would mm -hmm. still be water there and that other spot didn't have any water anymore because mm -hmm. it all dried up and when i went to this this wet creek bottom mm -hmm. that's where i ended up yeah. finding a bunch of them and, and i mean it was like five or six of them mm -hmm. you know just within yeah like i think a water has a lot to do with it yeah. you know i'm sure the mating season changes their pattern and whatnot but what i found is you know water is going to have a play a huge role especially you know the way our dry season wet season yeah. can be so dramatic I mean, yeah so. Uh, so I think that I think that definitely was the deciding factor in like mm -hmm. why those birds are there. 
then again, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> so, you know, I'm learning as I go and it's, it's just always really fun to do this kind of thing. You know, hopefully I can figure it out. So we just talked about your second bird. Mm -hmm. um, um, so your first bird, was that kind of a similar setup? Uh, was that also like a cypress head situation or how did, no, how he did was, that come he was together? near He was definitely near cypress, but he was in a pine. And, um, you know, that was being in there the two weekends before, hearing them roosted in the same spot both weekends. So night before, uh, this was night before opening day, you know, just listen. He's right where he's supposed to be. So creeped in as close as I could, tried to pinpoint exactly where he was at. At that time, I did use the owl call. So as I got in closer to him, because now at this point, you know, I'm using that locator call to keep him talking because I want to know it. Exactly, exactly where, where he's at, at, you know, and uh, figured out where he's at, found like a lane basically that was kind of off uh, where he was roosted at. Had one of two chances he's going to walk this way or he's going to walk that way. So, you know, took my chances on that spot, you know, got you let the sun go down real dark, creeped in, you know, just a little green light, uh, kept it pointed on the ground, creeped in real close got in, made a little blinds, you know, just set a little area, pushed the leaves so I wasn't crunching when I come in in the morning. I'd rather, you know, at that point make noise at, the, you know, in, in the evening and, yeah. and get that out of the get any branches out of the way, you know, creep out as quietly as possible, not sleep a wink that night <laughs> and get up in the morning and, you know, I, you know, I'm at that point, if I've got a bird roosted, I'm in an hour before even first light. So at the same time, you know, I'm thinking, God, this bird's going to gobble and, you know, three dudes are going to come running. So, you know, my whole plan opening morning is I'm get them down quick. I'm getting as close as possible. You know, I'm probably within 100 yards of his tree. I mean, I'm just I'm in his kitchen when he wakes up for breakfast. So, yeah, he was a little quiet. He hammered once on the tree. So, you know. He I was, was happy. He, he knew he was he there. He was there. So sat, chilled. I don't, I don't call to birds on the tree. I generally don't. My experience, it keeps them on the tree longer. So you know, you can call them on the tree. They'll hammer back at you. Call, hammer back, call, hammer back. That'll go on for 45 minutes. Well, they're probably trying to figure out where you are just as much oh, yeah. as you're yeah. trying to figure them out. They're just going to sit there and wait for the hen to come, you know, to it, come to them. To, exactly. Yeah. So I don't call to them on the tree. I hear him fly down. He hits the ground. I call to him. He gobbles back. I take the call. I put it down. I don't touch it. So once I made that connection, I'm going to... I'm not going to keep calling. I'm not going to keep hammering because, you know, every time I call, he'll just hammer back, call, somebody, hammer back, call, hammer back. There's a chance of somebody back. hearing it and coming yeah, to but, chase your birds. So, yeah. You know, I want I want him to get a little desperate. I want him to, yeah. to you know, to get, I want him to be the impatient one. Waited like, it must have been 15 or 20 minutes. It was so hard not to pick up that call. Finally, I couldn't take it anymore. I was like, I got to know where this bird is. Picked up the call, called again he's farther Ugh. so now the dilemma to stay or, or to go and I'm waiting and I'm waiting and I'm like what do I do and as I'm waiting I hear that was not the bird that I was set up on that was what I had heard far off in the distance was another bird this guy was close he didn't respond to me I just heard that drumming and as soon as I heard that drumming you know I knew it was on so you know as soon as I heard that drumming I had that that my eye you know right down that barrel I clicked the safety off and you know what two minutes later and I you know I see that head coming through the trees and as soon as he came around the corner boom so that was uh that was an exciting time um all right so so that's that's pretty awesome um it definitely gets me excited for this weekend so um but i'm a pretty noob hunter mm -hmm. and i i'm just I, I watch videos of people calling all the time mm -hmm. and i just i keep wondering do i just suck at calling mm -hmm. <laughs> or does the does the microphone make it sound different mm -hmm. so i want to hear some real calling done yeah. in person oh, yeah i got one of those check it out mine's um about ten dollars oh 
a raspy old hen by uh, <laughs> H and S. I don't know what that is. H S. I don't know. But uh, I mean, it kind of sounds like a turkey. Yeah. Let's hear yours. So this is a copper pot. See, that sounds way better. Can you do that on mine? You can use your little sandpaper and do whatever you want to it. Is that that sounds way cooler than mine? I'll show you what I do. That's gotten some birds to gobble before. I, I find the the best spot is like right there. Mm -hmm. That's that sounds terrible. <laughs> yeah, you might have to do some shopping before you hunt. <laughs> See, so this is like when I'm out, like, and, and I'll tell you, this call works because this weekend uh -huh. I told you I was out there, and uh, I'd been following this gobbler for a while, and I figured out exactly where he was strutting, and I was like, all right, that's good enough for me. I don't want to mess this up. I'm gonna get the heck out of here. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll just do a little turkey call mm -hmm. because as long as I'm still moving like what are the chances this turkey's actually gonna see me it's just gonna come looking for a call in a place that I'm not at well that didn't work out too well I ended up doing something along the lines of this yeah, and I then mean, look if there's a little bit of wind if he's far away you know just that faint sound you know that, no, that no, might no. work you know no 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 this bird was like <laughs> 40 yards away from me and there was no wind at all and yeah. I did that exact same thing and it was a little it was a young Jake it's uh -huh. probably why it worked this Jake came running <laughs> so fast it sounded like a deer was running towards me yeah. just crashing through the bushes and it jumped out of the palmettos into this trail that I was standing on it was like just wide open mm -hmm. he jumps out and he just looks up at me and just turns and bolts the other way and I was like crap but he wasn't, I don't think he was legal, so I didn't really care too much. But I was like, I'm putting this thing away. I don't want that to happen again. I don't yeah. really know. But let's, no, let's I, do. I think it has a lot to do with confidence. Let's do too. mouth calls. Because I actually well, have, fan, you don't have any? I don't even do mouth calls. Yeah. Oh, so I'll, I'll show you, you know. What do you got? This is. Oh, I didn't bring my box call. Is that push pull? Yeah. Oh, I've never even seen one of these. So this is one of my secret weapons that, you know, most guys will see this and laugh at it. But See, I've heard this is the most effective call on the planet. Really? Yeah, people say the push pull is by, has killed more gobblers than any other call out there. And most of the hardcore guys won't use them because it's too easy. I don't really yelp too much on it. Mm -hmm. What I'll do is if, if I think a bird's close or near me, I'll just, just little yeah, tiny. So you just like push it? Yeah. You just put pressure down. Yeah. But how do you do like, like cuts? Oh, yeah. Like just that? you know, you just have to control sort of the That's direction cool. and the pressure against the the call behind it. How's that sound? Pretty good. It's gonna fool some bird. I think he's lying. I mean, that sounds <laughs> terrible. But See, I, I really like this because basically, you know, the pot call takes a lot of action and yeah. a lot of movement. And well, what that's I'll, one hand. Yeah, what I'll do is I'll, you know, I'll have the gun up and, and I'll just, you yeah. know, just little tiny ticks and little noises. Just if I think he's close, if I think, you know, I'm, I'm in his living room and I'm, I'm too afraid to move, I'm too afraid to pick up the call. Um, I'm too afraid perfect, to, yeah. to make loud noises. Just a little, you know, just a little pop here and there, a little purr, just, you know, like I said, I don't really like to yelp on them, but just a little tick, a little pop, just something to sort of see if I can get them to reveal himself or make a yeah. noise or, you know, I'll even, you know, maybe I'll hear a putt that, you know, might be him or whatnot, but, you know, just to kind of keep conversation going. Because turkeys, when, you know, once you start getting around them and, and 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 being around them you realize they make noises all the time yeah constantly Even, yeah. so is there a reason you don't use mouth calls or you just well you know uh whatever works for people is what you should use and you know i actually to be totally honest with you i sound great on a mouth call in my car in my yard you know i can get on a mouth call now and be like this is how you do this and burp, 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 burp. 
But man, when I have when a turkey in front of me, <laughs> when that bird's gobbling, if I hear spitting and drumming, I mean, I have had a mouth call in my mouth and a bird right on top of me, and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> like it's just like something about my breathing, you know, my heart. I, I rate. know, like, I know exactly I cannot, what you mean. You cannot use that call. I have the same thing. I feel like when I'm at home practicing, I sound great, and yeah. then I get in the woods, and I don't even have to have like a bird in my lap. I just I get in the woods, and I'm so excited, and I want to sound so good that I can't. I cannot make the same noises that yeah, I do at I just home. Just don't have that control with my Except mouth. Except purrs mm -hmm. and like little like cuts and stuff mm -hmm. like that and like softer you know like tree calling mm -hmm. i feel like i do that really well on a mouth call mm -hmm. um yeah i have use a box that. call too but i'll sort of that's more for like longer distance right yeah really i mean loud. sort of later morning when the wind picks up a little bit you know that's sort of like my hail mary call like i'm just you know i'm kind of like walking into areas where i know turkeys are at and i'm just whoop, whoop, whoop. you yeah. know it's just like let's see what let's see if this will work you know yeah. and it's worked for me i mean i've been out 11 a.m and on a windy day and sat down you know ate at power bar and burp, 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 on the box call -la 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 -la, and then 15 minutes later i you know i killed the bird so wow. it's worked for me but in that early morning when things are super quiet man those box calls sound crazy and you just hit them and it's just like it just sounds yeah. way too intense so that's why i really like the pot call it's just it allows me to, to you know to get real excited and, and be loud if i need to but um it also allows like for really soft calling yeah. real light calling when i might have to get myself like a a good one because mm -hmm. that thing sounds awesome i, I always felt like they sucked because i had that thing <laughs> i need to get me one of those this little the, this thing's called the trigger finger like quaker boy if anybody wants to get one of those we're not sponsored, yeah, I mean, but if super, you guys want to sponsor us, hit us up. <laughs> right. You know, at the end of the day, it all comes down to what works, and that's what what's works for you for me. and what's what you're confident with. Mm -hmm. How about BHA? You want to say anything about BHA? Well, right now we have uh, the Gobblers and Garbage uh, initiative oh, that's going right. on right now. So um, basically, uh, what we're doing is uh, we're going out on public lands and we're collecting garbage during turkey season. So, um, you know shoot a bird, pick up some trash, hashtag gobblers and garbage 2020 and uh, and you can enter to win a, a Yeti cooler. And you get you get more points for more trash. Yeah, right? the more trash you pick up, the more points you get and um, if you do shoot a bird, you will get points uh, for the beard. Um, but you do not get points for the beard unless you also pick up trash. And you know, you can pick up trash on that hunt or, you know, the next day you go out um, but you do have to pick up trash to get points for the beard. Awesome. And where can people go to see like all the rules and stuff like that? Yeah, check out on go on Facebook and look up the Southeast chapter Backcountry Hunters and Anglers and look up uh, search gobblers and garbage and you'll see the complete rules. You also get rules for bringing out it. Uh, you also get points for bringing out new hunters and there's also some other things we have worked into it um, that can give you an edge to win. We are sort of trying to work on another event but with this whole coronavirus <laughs> thing going on right now we don't know Everything exactly <laughs> when it's going to happen but uh you guys can expect to see a fishing event coming up in the hopefully near future yeah hopefully so, the summer yeah so look out for that and uh with that i want to wish everybody good luck in their turkey season and thank you for uh for doing this uh this little chat with me and uh thank you all for tuning in and uh, we'll catch you guys next time